We all remember the online international sensation that swept through the gaming community in February of 2014. It was a momentous occasion that permeated pretty much every single facet of geek culture. It spawned pictures, myths, gods, religions, articles, love, hate, boundless amounts of entertainment. Hell, it even created a personal opportunity to dive into something I've loved since I was five years old. It allowed me an access point to begin a Pokemon-focused channel, and I'm eternally grateful to it for that. However, However, I'm not here today to wax nostalgic about the series. I'm here to take a deeper look into the ideation of Twitch Plays Pokemon. Why did it become so popular? Why were people inclined to give these Pokemon backstories and plots that they more than likely don't do for their own personal playthroughs? And probably, most importantly, what happened to it? I hope to answer these questions as I lead you through the rise and fall of an epic. Join me as we take a closer look into the psychology of Twitch Plays Pokemon. To start things off, we must all realize, even though I'm positive most people know this, Pokemon is a wildly successful franchise. It has a popular video game series with a wide array of side stories and games. The trading card game is played competitively for cash prizes. The anime has been running for more than 800 episodes with 20 movies to boot. It doesn't take a lot for an idea centered on this juggernaut of a franchise to gain some speed. So why did Twitch Plays Pokemon become so popular? To start us off, it tugged at a lot of our heartstrings, playing the overly nostalgic yet admittedly very broken first generation. Almost every long-term Pokemon fan remembers playing Pokemon Red or Blue or Green that first time. I chose Charmander because what isn't to love about a tiny flaming salamander? Well, looks like I already broke my edict about not waxing nostalgic about the series, but that's besides the point. What I'm trying to say is nostalgia is a heavy force when it comes to new ideas. Those who were raised in the days of 8 to 64-bit graphics will still look back fondly on their experiences, even if the game might not live up to snuff today. So when this Australian modder rigged a game of Pokemon Blue, a lot of people were on board just solely based on the possibility of getting to play a classic game again. Although this time, there was a catch. Twitch Plays Pokemon did something that, to my knowledge, no one had ever done before. They made a personal experience social. You weren't the one making the decisions. You had to contend against, at its peak popularity, 120,999 other people. So this leads me to my next point, about why this phenomenon spurred so many stories, fanciful tales about each individual Pokemon's life and death. I don't know about you, but I've never created backstory to my companions. They were just that. Companions. My selected group of friends that would help me climb my way to the top. Friends that I loved every inch of the way. But this surpassed love. This created new life. That lowly Pidgey you ran into within the first minutes of the game wasn't just a Pidgey. It was a savior. That Rattata? It was a tunnel rat too scared to continue on. Your fossil became a god. Your unintentional evolution turned into a demon, purveyor of doom and misfortune. And your starter? A wanderer, set with an ill fate. You didn't just play through the game, you experienced a world created by its players, not the game itself. And this is all because the solo experience was shared with millions of others. Innumerable thoughts, ideas, plots, all colliding simultaneously until one stuck. It created a like environment that so many people could share in, and that made them feel good. People love sharing after all, but I suppose I can put it in a more eloquent perspective. I can liken this feeling to voting. Does your one individual vote make a difference in the sea of other votes? Sadly, no, it probably does not. However, it does instill a sense of contributing to something larger than yourself, especially if the end result is what you personally work towards. It's putting a single dot on a piece of paper with millions of other dots. The end portrait is made that much more beautiful in your eyes because you contributed. You helped make it what it was, even if only minutely. That could include anything from graphically illustrating the characters, to watching the stream and inputting commands, and these create a sense of pride and happiness. We enjoy feeling these things, so we tell our friends, allowing them to take part and feel good as well. This personal experience made social exploded the boundaries of our imaginations, because the end goal wasn't just ours anymore. It was millions of other people's goal as well. Understanding this, though, how could the Twitch Plays Pokemon series have fallen through the cracks? The internet is a fickle beast, as anyone who's ever been on it for more than 12 seconds can attest. The mind craves instant gratification, and Twitch Plays Pokemon satisfied that need by being a unified, collaborative effort with almost instant results for every command. Once it finished, it proved to be such a triumphant and satisfying conclusion that everyone would be ecstatic for the next generation, right? 
wrong. It's cliche as it sounds, the magic was gone. We'd all gone through this treacherous journey with laughs and anguish. The ending was wholly nourishing. Why would we want to repeat it? It would suffer from movie syndrome, the prospect of a sequel not living up to its predecessor's qualifications. Unfortunately, that's what happened. Generation 2, while entertaining, didn't have the same charm. A good chunk of people left, but the people who remained were still able to grasp the same feeling I spoke of in the last section. Those who left just needed something different, some new project that would be created, fulfilled, and then tossed aside for the next new trend. This declination of attention continued as Twitch eventually rolled through each of the six generations. All magic was gone, with a lot of people lost along the way. Now it has people trying to revive the glory days of six months ago with wilder and more extravagant gimmicks. Fish plays Pokemon? Rock? plays Pokemon, ludicrous ideas all hell-bent on retaining the glory and excitement created from the first one. But it won't come back. It's not the same. Imitators will never reach the heights of the original. And all of this made me think of it in terms of the Pokemon series in general. That is for another video, however. So will we ever get another experience similar to Twitch plays Pokemon? Who knows, I'm down with the prospect of establishing a bond in a community formed with the cumulative efforts of a majority striving to achieve one goal. It gave me a reason to start this channel, after all. Will it be the same? Only time will tell. But as I said, the internet is a fickle beast. Now, uh, if you could excuse me, I'm gonna go watch cat videos until I barf.